Welcome in, everybody. We have a special edition of In Off the Bench, an amazing opportunity. You know, our platform has been used to bring some of the best character athletes on, but we want to take it a step further. You know, as Christians, we're called to talk about our faith, and some of the athletes that we have had on have really, whether it's been on social media or I've seen it with my own eyes in person, whether on the field, on the mat, on the court, really just display what it is that God calls us to do. And so we're going to kind of do maybe a three or four part series and kind of see where it goes and and talk to some of these athletes about, you know, the opportunities they've had and how they've been able to to do this journey and have Christ along with them. Um, first, shout out to our sponsors, Chinook Cedary Athletic Collection and the Bell Smith. Um, one of our guests has actually got an NIL deal with the Bell Smith. And I bring that up just to say that um, the Bell Smith is a businessman who um, is very faith based. So shout out to him. But with that being said, uh, you know, Maddie Anderson, first, how are you doing today? I'm good. Just living life. How are you? I'm doing great, especially to be with you ladies. Danielle, how are we doing? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. So just to get this thing kicked off, um, you know, speaking about why I wanted you ladies to come on, um, Maddie, to start with you, um, you know, on social media, we have such an opportunity, but specifically y'all as um, college female athletes, your your platform and what these younger girls are seeing, um, you know, you have an opportunity to show them an example to shine a light in a dark world. And for you, Maddie, every week you're putting out the verse of the week and you're not just putting out a verse, but you're explaining what it means to you. You're breaking it down. So for you, you know, that's what spoke to me. What got you started on doing that? Well, actually, um, so I started that this past December, but it's been on my heart for about two years before that. Um, just kind of brainstorming of how can I use my platform more? Like you said, as college athletes, we have a... Um, kind of a big opportunity to have uh, share on our platforms our faith and just share through our sport our faith and so um, he put on my heart a while ago like to just share a verse of the week I really didn't know how that might look but just to kind of um, try it out and so I started in December and I was like all right I'll just pick a verse I'll explain it and then I'll post it and from there it's just kind of grown I'm, we're on our this is my 35th week, I think, this past Sunday. So it's been a blessing. Um, I've learned a lot through it, especially like learning there's not, you don't need to have likes to have satisfaction or worth. And I think that's been huge for me because I post it and it doesn't even matter how many followers I have. Just the messages that I get from some people of like, hey, that really spoke to me this week. That's all that I need from that. I mean, the Lord has blessed me with so many friendships and um, just encouragers to help me keep going through this verse of the week. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, you talk about it doesn't matter the numbers. There's nothing better to me than um, I know you have had this happen as you kind of hinted at it. But having a message come from someone that sees something that you put out and say that they needed it. It was just the right time. They were in a certain place in their life and that verse or or whatever content you put out um, hit them. So, you know, you never know what you doing that can do for somebody who just may be um, in a certain place. And what I love for what I've seen for you ladies in Mississippi State is seeing a few different athletes from a few different sports. Like I see you and, and Becca Walk from the volleyball team um, at the FCA meetings, openly speaking and, and sharing your testimony. So just awesome stuff that y'all got going on in Starkville. Yeah, it's we have a great community here for sure. But moving over to Norman, Oklahoma, Danielle, you know, I was talking to you about it before the episode. I was even bragging on you too, Maddie. Um, you know, seeing you in person at the meets, I've obviously seen it on your social media presence. I've seen it on TV, but being there and just seeing your leadership and your example. Um, so when it comes to social media, it's not just, you know, tongue in cheek. It's not just there to try to present and look like you're a Christian, but you actually show it and lead by example on the mat to your teammates. So talk to me about you know, how that, is, uh, you know, what's kind of inspired you to be that leader that's, you know, faith-based to your team? Yeah, so honestly, what sparked this whole past year was probably one of the most difficult years for me, and it really was a huge perspective change for me. Um, I previously had been competing three events regularly throughout every competition, and this year I was mostly completing bars and 
I got myself into the floor lineup by the end of the year, uh, working hard, but I kind of realized that you can have such, such a greater impact on people with how you treat them and how you uplift them. And I've, for me personally, I'm more fulfilled just knowing that I could spread the light of Christ and just the light of joy just to those around me. Because like she said, getting sweet messages like, oh my gosh, you've really helped me or you've really touched my life. I think that's more fulfilling than any championship or any medal that you'll ever get. So I think this past year has really made me grow, grow up a little bit, maybe in a sense, and just really be there for my team and become the best leader that hopefully I can be and better in the future. What I love that I've seen lately is, uh, you know, Addison Feta, the the freshman that just came on recently to the show, seeing all the pictures of you and her hanging out. And, you know, I come from men's sports a little bit different, right? And, and you know, it's almost like, I don't know why, but, you know, the the freshmen got to go through all these different things to prove their, their worth and to hang out with the older guys. But I love seeing someone, you know, an upperclassman like you with your your leadership value and your moral and ethics and just seeing that she's hanging around you because I know that she's getting the best mentorship um, she could possibly get being around girls like you and Faith and Jordan. And so, um, you know, I know how talented she is as a gymnast, but, you know, just thinking about um, y'all can just help her be a better person overall. So I just love getting to see that no different than what I'm seeing in Starkville. And, and in these college cities, you know, as having my daughter in Baton Rouge now at LSU, um, these are the things that inspire me because um, I'm encouraging her to look for the same thing, even though she's not an athlete, look for these groups of people because um, typically all you hear about with these colleges, right, is the, is the parties, who's got the best, you know, parties, who's got the best tailgates, all this stuff. You don't hear about, you know, the Christian things that are going on. That's why this thing that just happened in Ohio State was massive, right? Like um, to to see the football team and to see a campus take over, like, man, what do we got to do to get that to be more of the story in colleges more than the other stuff. Um, you know, I think at the end of the day, you have two national championships, but you would say that none of that would matter if you could pull off something like that in Norman. Would I be wrong? Oh yeah, absolutely. We actually um, had this super cool Christian event called fill the stadium here in Norman. Um, Chance the rapper came in, some pastors came in to talk and we actually filled the pretty much the entire football stadium with, with believers of Christ. And it was really, truly a, a moving experience for everybody having concerts and sermons. Um, but if, yeah, if we could spread that across the country, I think that'd be incredible. Absolutely. So, um, you know, not going to take, you know, too long, but we'll start with you, Maddie, just, you know, a short and condensed version. Want to be able to, to get your testimony, how you got to, you know, where you are today. We obviously know that that's not something that just happens overnight. So, you know, just how you were able to, um, to, to come to know Christ and how kind of got to where you are now? Well, I grew up in a Christian household and um, I really didn't have a relationship with him until like my senior year, but my parents really set a foundation for me of just telling me every day, like just little reminders of verses of like, do not be afraid or like just trust in him. Like just I can't give you like specific examples because it was just kind of every day, like little things that they helped me kind of set that foundation. And then my senior year of high school was COVID. And so everything that was supposed to be amazing about senior year, like prom, graduation, um, powder puff, whatever it was, um, kind of got taken away. And so that's when I really started like realizing that there's a little more to life than just the things of this world. And so um, I bought my first Bible. I joined a um, Bible, uh, little Bible study through Zoom through social media. That's kind of how I got started, and then from there it kind of kick started. Um, I joined FCA when I got to Mississippi State, and that really helped as well. Just being able to be filled with those who have gone through so much, and um, just being mentored through my faith as I was new in my faith, and so um went through FCA several years started um pregame devotionals with my team where um we just go over a random verse or a random passage just to get our minds right um but then I kind of started getting through the motions of faith kind of doing a to-do list type faith of where I just check God off at the beginning of the day and then just move on and it made me start to have soccer as work and 
something I resented instead of something that I appreciated because God gave me the abilities. So, um, my, I want to say junior year, gosh, is it really only junior? (laughs) (laughs) Um, my junior year, I tore my hamstring off the bone during a game. I did the splits and yes, it actually is as painful as it sounds. Um, and I was taken out of my sport for a long time and that really hurt me. Um, I asked, God, like, what the heck? I thought I was doing all the right things. And I was like, why are you taking this away from me now? Like, this is supposed to be the best year that I'm going to have, like, performance-wise. So why are you taking it away? And um, I didn't realize till later that he was trying to get me to recognize what a blessing it is to play soccer and that he gave us these gifts to enjoy, not to be burdened by. And he wants us to enjoy the freedom of being able to play and the next summer I went to ultimate training camp, which is a Christian kind of, I'll call it boot camp. I don't really know how else to describe it. It was a life-changing experience for sure. It really solidified kind of that whole year of walking through the injury while he was teaching me, what people were telling me. And then that camp just helped me recognize that my sport is a gift that I need to enjoy and appreciate and glorify God through. And I can't do that if I'm treating it like a job. And so from there, I've just learned like to play with freedom. And from that freedom, I can enjoy being at soccer. I can serve people a lot more. And um, God has just blessed me with the ability to um, play the sport. And so through that, I need to glorify him through my words, my actions and my performances. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's kind of crazy you say it, but talk to so many athletes where it does lose its fun because it does become like work you said. And um, get you got to remember why you play it ultimately. And like you said, blessed because, you know, so many athletes would love to play at that that level and didn't get the opportunity because, um, you know, um, they just weren't as gifted or put in the time that you did or whatever the case may be. Um, but, you know, tomorrow we're going to have KD Hill on and, and he floored me, um, a guy who – was going to get to play professional football and, you know, had his accident taken away from him and glorified God through it because he lived when he could have died. And he saw it as an opportunity to, to become a public speaker and share his ministry. And it was just, it it floored me because what, you know, who celebrates in a time of having everything they work for taken away, but yet he did. And now I'm watching him thrive. So, you know, your story, his story. And as we're facing to get into Danielle's and everybody else, it's, it's just amazing that it's perspective, right? Um, mm-hmm. If you change the way you look at things, um, it completely changes the outlook. It's, it's no different than this show, right? Um, I spend way too much time looking at the numbers and why, like I'm getting the opportunity to talk to athletes and have them share their story and get to watch y'all and support y'all and be a fan. And it's, it's changed the way that I see games. I, you know, not just being tied to my team and wins and losses, but actually enjoying the sport as a whole greater um, just changes everything. But for you, Danielle, you know, um, give us your testimony and kind of how it's uh, got you to where you are. Okay. Yeah. So I also grew up in a a very Christian household. My family's Catholic. So we'd go to church every Sunday um, up until I got, so I've, I was confirmed and everything got to school, still went to church, But I would say my faith really strengthened my junior year this past year of college. Um, Just mentally was probably the toughest year that I've probably ever had in my life. Um, Things just kept happening. Things weren't going my way. And I kept thinking, like, why me? Why me? I'd pray pray about it um, and whatnot. But I kind of touched on it earlier. Looking back, um, surrounding myself with FCA and my teammates that are also believers um, looking back on the season, I've definitely grown as a person and as a a leader on my team, kind of as we talked about earlier, that my my role is to be an athlete here. My role is also to be um, someone of Christ to shine, shine his light on my teammates and to shine that across campus as well. Because, um, I mean, I only have one more year left here, and I've realized that every single day, every opportunity that we get is a gift. And to really enjoy those moments with my team and with the people I really enjoy being around is something I've really learned that there's more to life than than sports, although that's what we think sometimes in the moment. But 
yeah, um, shining this, the light of Christ is really what leads to eternal glory. So giving him all the glory in the process is, is really important that I try to spread. Yeah. And, and like I said to both y'all and I kind of talked about off the top, it's not just one of those things that you're saying, right? So many athletes, um, they'll accomplish something. And the first thing they'll say is, you know, give glory to God, but then you kind of see actions that don't really match what, what they said, but, um, you want to see athletes more actually using their platform, not just thanking God, you know, because they want a championship or they want an individual award or whatever the case may be, but actually actively out there, whether it's, um, you know, with your teammates or um, obviously I've seen it, um, you know, talking about Carter Cunningham, who inspired me um, going and branching out to to different teams to where they started a, a Devo that they even I'm a part of now that they send out every morning and in, inspire each other. So you, you just love to see it. And for, to give a quick one on mine, just because y'all haven't heard it, um, I got to tell y'all, my chaplain of my football team, I was a troubled uh, teenager, to say the least. Uh, every Friday night, the party after the football game was at my house, um, and uh, I did not care to go to church at all. My chaplain would invite me every single weekend to church, and I would tell him no. I would even laugh at him. Um, he never did anything more than ask. So he never pushed, which all was always huge with me. Right. Mm -hmm. And he just kept asking. And then in my senior year, um, he asked and it was really, you know, him continually being dedicated and not being thrown by the fact that I had rejected him. Right. Um, that made me decide, you know what, I'm going to go, I'm going to see what this is about. And, um, you know, I went and I went to a Wednesday night and it was cool. The The music was cool. The The students are all there. They're having fun. And for lack of a better way to say it, they weren't nerdy like I, I thought they would be. Um, they were awesome. And I saw people, other athletes that I knew from the school. I saw, you know, I saw people that were in my class that I didn't even realize. And, um, and it kind of branched. But, um, you know, his dedication to pursuing me. Um, was just amazing enough to where it finally inspired me to go. And even still, um, you know, I didn't just completely transform. It was hard um, being surrounded by the friends I did. And that's when you kind of find out about your friends, right? Because um, true friends will want the best out of you. They will inspire you to do great things. And um, the so-called friends that I had um, while I was trying to start living for Christ were still trying to get me to do all the wrong things. And so, and then I, I even struggled some in the military, but when I got out and I got cancer, um, that's when, and you know, a lot of people do in times of, of sickness and everything, I turned to God being that I had a foundation with him. Um, and that's ultimately when I changed my life over, but a lot of, a lot of hills and valleys and y'all know how it is, um, seeking him in the valley can be the biggest thing in the transition, but to see y'all at y'all's age, um, the way y'all are doing things, because I struggled so much and it's not saying that y'all don't struggle, but it feels like y'all are, y'all are having more success than I feel like I was. Um, and so I commend y'all, especially, like I said, um, y'all live in much harder times than I did, um. I, I believe 20 years ago when I was y'all's age, it just, it felt like because social media wasn't there, um, there wasn't nearly as much negativity that's out there. The the things that are being pushed and driven to your generation and the generation after you is just, it's wild. And now we, we're in times, right? Like y'all know how it is when the election comes around, people just, they, they get crazy. So, um, you know, I just love that what y'all are doing at y'all schools and for y'all's teams and, um, you know, for y'all, I want to know, and obviously, Maddie, you talk about doing verse of the week. You know, is there a verse to you that, you know, you'd like to share with others um, that just really inspires you? Um, I have a couple, but the one I'd mainly say is Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Uh, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. Long verse, but I've been living by this for the past year and it's, um, just been a blessing uh, to see how much we can trust in the Lord and how much if you just let go, like it all will work out. And there's no need to worry or stress because he's literally got it in his hands um, because he like he has walked before us. He has walked our whole lives before us, before we even were born. And so it's so relaxing and gives me so much peace to just let go and give God everything in my life. Give even each day, just giving him my to-do list and be like, listen, 
I'm putting nothing on my list. You just take control and I trust you to put whatever you want on my heart today. And um, I think it's important for all of us to kind of recognize that like he's not a distant God. He is always with us and he walks with us in every step of life. And so you can honestly just imagine yourselves lifting all your burdens, worries and stresses about past, present or future. And just here you go, God, give him the backpack and he will walk alongside you with it. And um, you can trust that whatever he has for you is going to be for your good and his glory. Absolutely. What about for you, Daniel? Do you have a verse that you like to go to? Yeah, my favorite verse probably since beginning of high school is uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 31. Uh, Whether you eat or drink, um, do it all for the glory of God. And that verse really grounds me because um, at the end of the day, every day is a gift. Every opportunity that I have is a gift. All the people around me is a gift. And none of it would be possible without God. So if you don't give him the glory, I just think that's it's just not right. Um, without him, none of this would be possible. So really grounding yourself and being grateful for everything that I have and that I've been given is, is something that I try to remind myself every day that nothing would be possible without him. No doubt. Well, we started a uh, student group some years back and we did it on the foundation of my favorite verse. Uh, my wife was such a, was so instrumental in this. It's kind of funny. Um, because I'm the very outspoken one, a lot of people thought that, you know, Jim, they can say Jim leads this group or Jim's doing this. And it's like, my wife is actually doing everything. I'm just the one up here talking, but it was called the three S click and it was um, serve sermon and social. And so we met every uh, Wednesday, um, every other Wednesday, we would go through our study that was the sermon base and it was uh Royal through blood um, just explaining, um, and these were middle schoolers, explaining, um, you know, who they were in Christ. And then we would do a serve opportunity and literally go feed the homeless and things like that um, in Memphis. And then we would do a social outing and we do everything from bowling to laser tag to skating. And so um, actually a, the the best thing I've ever actually been a part of in my Christian walk, it actually it grew to such success. It's the reason why it, uh, it ended. Um, they, they felt like, um, they wanted to try to do something like that with the church as a whole, because it felt like, um, all the other student groups weren't succeeding like ours was, and they wanted to do that. And unfortunately, when I talk about my wife's leadership, um, when they try to do it on their own, it didn't go the same way, but to the actual reason I tell the story, the verse was the foundation of everything we did. And, um, these same kids who are now y'all's exact age um, still go by this verse and it's still most of their favorite verse, but Ephesians 2.10, and I like it from the New Living Translation version because um, it says, for we are God's masterpiece instead of handiwork or craftsmanship. Um, he has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. And that word masterpiece, um, especially because my wife's a professional artist, um, just explaining to these these kids but to anybody as i say that 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 you're a masterpiece or if you want to say handiwork craftsmanship that god created new when when you you know accepted him surrendered your life to him um you know and he had all these good things planned for you uh, like y'all said it's not all these negative things that we're fed that we're supposed to do i think that the thing i think is hardest in this life um i think probably for y'all and for me validation right um we always seek validation in others and for what right um at the end of the day what people think about us um doesn't matter right it's it's who we are in christ and and it's doing things as as y'all talked about for his glory and it's it's why i hammer the whole thing when i tell y'all about numbers do the numbers really matter at the end of the day like am i a, a better person because a thousand people listen to your episode versus 500. No, it, it, it really doesn't matter. Um, I did what, you know, I felt like God was calling me to do to share y'all story. So something that I'm working on, I know it's something um, that y'all is just, you know, college athletes and, and just collegiate or college students all together have to deal with, with your peers, just because there's so much pressure. And like I said, it's so much harder for y'all um, with social media, but um you know, we'll close this thing up, um, Maddie, um, especially because you're doing the verse of the week. So I would love for them to be able to follow you. What is your social media handle? It's Maddie, M-A-D-D-Y dot Anderson dot one. All right. So um, 
obviously follow her just to to see what she's doing on the field. Um, elite level goalie. I think Mississippi State got a real shot at winning a national championship, their first one. Um, it'd be really cool to see, but um, she locks it down in the goal. So if you want to see what she's got going on in general, um, but following her for that verse of the week, um, like I said, she's not just providing a, a verse, but she comes on there and talks about it and what it means to her. And she would love for you to jump in the conversation. And if you have any questions or just to, to discuss it. And for you, Danielle, um, where can they find you at? Uh, my username is just uh, Danielle Sievers, no space, nothing in between. Very, very simple. They can they can find <laughs> yeah. you with no problem. But um, I thank you, ladies, for coming on here. It means the world. Like I said, y'all have inspired me. Um, even you know, um, that's why I think age doesn't matter. I talked about Carter. I talked about KD. I've talked about you too. Um, the idea that you know y'all can inspire an old man me like me right um um y'all are inspiring you know younger people you know people your age older people just continue um to keep doing what you're doing and i'm hoping what we're doing here today sparks other athletes to come on and share their story and continue to do this but um like i said i really appreciate you ladies uh today and um wish you nothing but the best going forward thank you so thank much you so for much. yes Absolutely. thank you so much <laughs> All right, that's Maddie Anderson and Danielle Sievers, everybody. If you like hearing their story or you just like hearing us talk X's and O's, please like and share on podcasts, the podcast on Facebook. Listen, subscribe on Twitter. I can't even talk today. I'm, I swear, Daniel's supposed to do this, and I was trying to throw in the next chapter thing, so I'm going to have to edit this out. Let me try that again. <laughs> um, that's Maddie Anderson and Danielle Sievers, everybody. If you like hearing their story or you just like hearing Average Joe's talk X's and O's, please like and share the podcast on Facebook. Retweet us on Twitter. Listen, subscribe on Apple, Spotify, and Anchor. As always, ratings, comments, hugs, love, feedback, all that good stuff is welcome. We will see everyone back tomorrow for Chapter 2. We will have four young men come on to talk about their faith and their story. We can't you know, get to it fast enough. I'm excited as we continue on this journey. But in the meantime, remember, strong body, sharp minds, grit and grind all the time. We are out.